we have two ball valves. One is a process assistance ball valve, the other one is an opposition ball valve. The initial feature is the fact that the process assistance ball valve face to face dimension is longer than the opposition. The reason is that this face to face dimension is made to DIN 3202-M3. Another obvious feature is the fact that the pad mounting on the top here of the process system ball valve has clearance. Now this is two things. First of all, A, you can mount actuators on this unit by taking the handle off. You can do the same thing with that one. But with this one, you can't get a bolt back underneath there to mount the actuator. This one here, the pad high pad mount, the bolt can go through, so easy to actuate mount. And also for steam and high temperature going through this valve, it has a long neck for stoke and reduce thermal transfer. Whereas this one here, the neck is very short, you'd have a high thermal transfer, and you have to pull the ball valve apart to get the bolts into it, or use studs, so it's going to be difficult getting your fingers around there as well. Now, another obvious feature of the process systems, we have information engraved on here, which molded on, which shows you the size of the valve. This doesn't have that information. It has uh, the CF8M, 1000 PSI, but it doesn't tell you what size valve. And we also have heat numbers on the base, which relate specifically to the batch of material that this was poured from. Um, quality of finish, this is um, Australian Zircon Sand, it gives a very high finish of the investment cast. We'll pull these apart and examine the inside, but you'll notice that all, both of them have the locking device here, so you can lock it off, padlock, um, back to the actuator, and it's a stop on both cases. The other thing is to look at is a gauge. This is a ISO 7 gauge, half inch. If I put it into this valve here, it goes to the face, which is the correct depth. There's a tolerance in the face, and this shows the face depth here. If I And it's rigid, there's no movement. But if I do the same in the opposition ball valve, A much rattler feel to it and it bottoms out here now this is bottomed out but it hasn't got the full depth of thread this moves backwards and forwards and this tells me straight away that this thread is not made to an ISO 7 pattern it's in fact a short stumpy thread inside there which means most fittings will probably bottom out and not seal correctly on the outer component We'll pull this, these units down now and check the insides. On the left here we have the process systems ball valve now disassembled. And on the right we have the opposition ball valve disassembled. First things we can see is that the process systems ball valve, the ball itself is highly polished, which gives a very good finish when you're rubbing, rotating in the seals. The seals themselves are CNC machines, so you've got to have that highly polished ball to maintain good wear over a long period of time. The other thing that we see in this is that the there is two components at the end here, two seats. This is the outer seat, or seal, that seals between the body and the end component. And on the inside here we have another seat which is uh, the main body seat for the for the uh, the ball which pops right through there and that sits inside there and that can float backwards and forwards and if you can see the little v's there's four little v's around there little v ports and they they're here to equalize the pressure between the body cavity on the inside and the the actual supply pressure coming in. When that ball is inside there, it's seated against that inner face, and you've got to have that pressure differential to be able to 
go across it. Now, pressure builds up and decreases and the, the seat can slide in and out. The pressure is differentiated between the two. So that is an important component. If we have a look over here at the opposition ball valve, I think you can see that the actual, this is not really, it's polished, but it's not really a super polish on that. But the obvious point is that this end component is one solid piece. So it acts, goes in here, it acts as a seal when we put those two components together, but also the center bit inside here is where the ball sits on. Now the problem being is that when the ball is in here, seated like that, and it's closed off, we've got pressure on there, we do not have any method of getting that pressure through to the body cavity. So the body cavity is at a low pressure and you've got high pressure on this side. So that means that the, as a ball is a floating ball, with all these ball valves, they float, floats backwards and forwards, this whole component can buckle in. And the bigger the valve becomes, the more pronounced this problem can be, especially at high pressures. So it makes you wonder whether this valve can specifically get to the 1000 psi rating that they're supposed to be for. Other components inside here, it's got the stem seal, O-ring inside there, which should be Viton. And then there is a chevron seal on here with a smaller chevron seal backing. It goes into, into that bit in the end and a thrust washer to go on the top. So you've got three, one main chevron seal and two small little backings on there. But if we go and have a look at uh, up here, first of all, there is a bell washers and then the other components for locking down on top of that stem. If we have a look back over here at the process systems stem. The O-ring is bite on and it has the correct colour, so the colour code should always be, usually, not always, but usually is orange for these sort of things, or red, should I say, to define it between that and MBR. MBR is usually black. Uh, the chevron seals in this one, there's two fully machined chevron seals. Now the chevron seal, the chevron seal, two fully machined chevron seals, what the chevron seal does is that it has a curved face on the front and a hollow face on the inside. So that curved face pushes in there. And as the pressure comes on by the thrust washers, it spreads out the outside edges to seal on the stem and on the body of the stem where the stem the guide of the stem so as the pressure is on there temperature is inside there it's a PTFE seat and this allows it to take higher pressure the Belleville washers in this case are very heavy duty and they've got also a backing thrust washer to equalize the pressure, the Belva washer gives constant loading on the chevron seats. As there's any movement in the stem, it adjusts the loading automatically. There's, not, there's no necessity for a locking nut on the top or a gland.